Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm ZS Caravalla from ZK Research, and I'm here in San Jose at NVIDIA's GTC 2024 event, which is being dubbed now as the largest AI show uh, in the world, which I think it probably is. I, I mean, I think it has to be, right? Yeah. yeah. This place. It's pretty darn big. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty big. Uh, and I'm here at the Cisco stand inside the Expo Hall, and the Expo Hall is always one of my favorite places to go because you get to see all the great partners that work with Cisco. And I'm here with Jeremy Foster and Kev Kevin Wallenberg from Cisco. Um, I'll start with you, Jeremy. Just a quick intro on yourself and uh, what you do with Cisco. Yeah, Jeremy Foster. I'm the general manager for the Cisco computing business. Okay, and Kevin? Uh, Kevin Wallweber, I'm the general manager for the data center and provider connectivity businesses. Yeah, and so, like I said, we're here at the Cisco stand. Kevin, we'll stick with you. Uh, what, are you what are you showing here? So if attendees from GTC come by here, what will they see? So one of the things we're trying to showcase here is how we can enable enterprises to more rapidly deploy uh, AI fabrics. Uh, and so we're demonstrating our AI-enabled Ethernet-based uh, fabric for NVIDIA GPUs. Yeah, and that's, uh, uh, I think that's one of the interesting aspects of AI. We all know about the GPU, but very rarely do we talk about the network itself, right? And uh, I think that's um, uh, really an underappreciated as aspect of building out AI infrastructure. And, um, and so let's just start with the show. Uh, you know, this is uh, um, a huge show, right? I think uh, 300,000 online attendees, 20,000 in person. What are you hoping to get out of the show? Uh, I mean, look, it was a great experience to go to the keynote, hear about a lot of the new technologies, whether it's Blackwell, which is kind of right behind you, and some things that we'll be working with NVIDIA on from a compute perspective, which is exciting. Yeah. And just being, uh, have an opportunity to talk to a lot of customers about where they are with their AI journey. Yeah, and how about you? What are you hoping to get them? Uh, for me, it's about the applications. So I'm here to see what our customers are going to be doing with AI and how we can best enable that. So on that theme, uh, I know you both talked to a lot of customers. W where are we with with uh, with AI today. I know Jensen Huang and uh, previous shows and things it's called uh, ChatGPT, the AI, the iPhone moment for AI. But when I talk to customers, I don't sense there's a tremendous amount of adoption uh, for you. So uh, where do you think we are at with AI adoption right now? Uh, we're definitely still early days. Uh, so if you look at most of the, the rapid deployment of AI infrastructure, it's really been with the hyperscalers. Uh, we've been engaged with a lot of them in, in building out these Ethernet-based fabrics for, for large-scale AI, for training of LLMs and things like that. Uh, but what I'm excited is how we can take those technologies and, and build them in a way that enables us to deploy it with enterprises at a much faster pace. Yeah. And I mean, what, what are customers telling you? What are, what are some of the things they're thinking about doing with it? Yeah, absolutely. We focus a lot in that enterprise space, obviously, with the UCS portfolio. And customers are just really at not only the early, early days, but at the different stages in the life cycle, right? There's a lot of focus and talk on training, and that's a certain set of sort of tools, so to speak, as well in terms of hardware and things that they would need to bring and network they would need to bring there. Then how are they dealing with inferencing? What are they going to be doing at the edge? And kind of looking at all those different things uh, as, as diff with across those different stages has been what we've been having a lot of conversations around. And when you think about a lot of the adoption, as you mentioned, was with hyperscalers, right? When you think about the hyperscaler environment, the enterprise environment, what are the, some of the similarities, but then also what are I mean, some of the big differences? The enterprise is trying to drive value for their business, right? That, it's like, how do we use AI? What are those use cases? How do we define them? And then what technology do we need to be able to unlock that value? And so, you know, how they're getting started, it, it, it kind of varies across the board. Some of them are off to a quick start, and to Kevin's point earlier, other customers are struggling a little bit to get started, and that's where we want to make it easier for them with things like the Cisco validated designs that we built across the Nexus and UCS portfolio, so you can get the infrastructure stood up, including the GPUs and the Ethernet network and the compute that you need for those inferencing type use cases across uh, FlexPod and FlashStack, so it's even inclusive yeah. of storage. And then also be able to build those Ansel, Ansible playbooks that we put on top of that infrastructure. So you can go out and grab an industry standard model like from Hugging Face, put it on top of that infrastructure and get going. So it's much more of a prescriptive approach versus the hyperscalers which try and put things together themselves, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you look at what they've done, they've built out with, with massive, massive training clusters for their LLMs with, with you know, 24,000 GPUs is what Meta just announced the other day. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the approach we're taking towards the enterprises, they don't want to manage their infrastructure. They want to be able to roll out uh, infrastructure capable of running these AI workloads. And so leveraging a technology like Ethernet Fabrics that we've been building for decades and applying it to the AI problem in a simple, scalable, and secure way is exactly what we're after. Yeah, well, it's fair to say you nobody builds Ethernet Fabrics like Cisco does, right? So now how about Absolutely. from an industry vertical perspective? I know uh, during Jensen's keynote, he talked about healthcare. That's sort of been an obvious one, but, but other ones come to mind. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a lot of our financial services customers have been moving aggressively towards these technologies. And, and really, it comes down to data. And so a lot of what we're after is how do we enable our customers to build out these large infrastructures to be able to run AI workloads and get better access and better insights out of the data that they have within their enterprise itself. Yeah, okay, now Jeremy, I'm going to go back to you now. While the focus of this event is the GPU, in fact, I'm not even sure why we call it a GPU anymore because graphics is one small part of what it does, right? As we were talking about before, AI can't be done with the GPU alone. And so I alluded to this a bit before, but uh, from the UCS portfolio perspective, how has the server had to evolve to keep up with the demands of AI? I mean, we've always supported NVIDIA GPUs throughout the history of UCS, right? So we have to make sure that we're keeping up with the latest yeah. and greatest, and obviously it continues to evolve faster and faster as we go down, down the, time, uh, the timeline here. But it's also about being able to be adaptable. So customers are going to need, for example, different CPU to GPU mix if they're in a training scenario versus an inferencing scenario. And with UCS and what we've built with UCSX and our ability to run GPUs in a modular form factor, we can allow a customer to have a choice. Like, do you want an NVIDIA you know, GPU for this high-end one or do you want a lower one? Do you want an Intel processor or an AMD processor in one of our blades? And you can kind of mix and match to customize to those you know, use cases. Yeah, and the, the partnership Cisco's had with NVIDIA, uh, I know you've had some recent announcements, but the partnership, I mean, the partnership's been on for years, right? Yeah. And so how do you help each other um, you know, with uh, uh, hel helping joint customers? Yeah, I mean, I think we just launched a co-engineering yeah. effort. I know, Kevin, you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, so, so obviously we've been deploying uh, NVIDIA GPUs in, in UCS and in our technologies for, for years, but what this partnership is really about is taking world-class uh, AI technologies like, like their GPUs, their Bluefield uh, uh, DPUs and, and SmartNICs and enabling them to run across uh, best-in-class networking with, with Cisco's Ethernet networking fabrics uh, and build solutions that are simple, fast, and easy for customers to deploy so they can focus more on leveraging their data and getting something out of these AI workloads and not how they're managing the, the network infrastructure itself. Yeah, so it's more than just co-marketing efforts here, right? There's 100%. There's this is really an engineering engagement. Uh, we're going to demonstrate some of those technologies here, uh, and there's more to come uh, and to be announced in the future yeah. around how we're going to co-innovate together. Yeah, I actually think even from a channel perspective, you've got much broader reach uh, than NVIDIA does with channel partners. And you know that's an audience that I think is still coming up to speed with AI itself as well. And that's one of the biggest benefits we saw yeah. from this, is we could take their, their world-class technologies on the AI side, build our, our solutions, and then leverage our sales force and our go-to-market partners to, to drive deeper and deeper into that enterprise customer base. Yeah, now both of you have talked about the some of the engineering work that goes in and bringing these systems together. You know, it's funny that uh, uh, throughout IT, we, we swing this pendulum where we want everything integrated and everything disaggregated, then as soon as we disaggregate, we can't assemble it, and we want to reintegrate it. But um, when you think about building out AI infrastructure, what are some of the biggest challenges customers are going to face along that path? First of all, it's just managing those infrastructure components. Yeah. And so I think you, you spelled it out perfectly. Yeah. When we disaggregate, uh, what we do is we add complexity to building out these systems. And so our goal is to deliver simple, easy to deploy, secure, manageable infrastructure bring the best of telemetry and, and, and debuggability into that ecosystem itself and let our customers focus on actually what, they're, what they came to do, which is running AI workloads and getting value out of the, the data that they have locked inside their network. Yeah. And you know, I would add to that, I think there's obviously the things that happen at the infrastructure layer, but we don't stop there. I mean, you hear a lot of the GTC about what's going on with NVAIE or you know, the software stack that they yeah. want to run on top. And that's that's also what we're integrating into the co-engineered solutions as well as what we put into our CVDs that we were referring to earlier. So it's about helping customers make that easy to adopt so they can then follow that throughout the life cycle of their app. Yeah, and I'm uh, when, I, when I think about Cisco, it's really a unique company. And I think when people think of Cisco just uh, you know, just uh, you know, in passing, they might think of you as a network company or the company that brought WebEx. But with regard to your AI portfolio, you actually have a stack I think that's unmatched really by anybody, from observability to security to network to, to what you're doing on the compute side. So, talk about how you've taken those components and actually created more of a Cisco AI stack for customers versus uh, what a lot of your competitors might have, but just maybe one or two pieces of that. Yeah. Well, we. we it's really, we talked about the Cisco validated designs, and it's about bringing compute, network, yeah. storage, GPUs, that software layer, and even 
some of the industry standard models and wrapping that together and really also enabling our channel to your point earlier to be able to take that out to market like they have with our previous Cisco validated designs for Flash Stack and, and, and FlexPod as well. So it's really just building out or building in, if you will, AI into some of those successful go-to-market mechanisms we've had across the data center solutions portfolio. And those validated designs are CVDs, right, as they're known as. Uh, those are really, uh, for those not familiar with them, describe what they are. Yeah, so, so think of it as a, a simple but validated solution that our customers can deploy with a blueprint. So it tells you exactly the piece parts and components that you need, exactly how to put it together, and exactly how to manage it so that they can run Ethernet-based fabrics up and running quickly and easily, <clears throat> excuse me, along with uh, those GPUs. But I think the point you were getting at, which is interesting, is you start to tie together access to data. And with the, the acquisition that just closed this morning of Splunk, yeah. we actually have much more access to, to the data that's inside of our customers' networks. And when you start to think about how AI is going to run in the future, it, it runs with data and having access to you know, the largest data source in that customer's network, I think is going to be critical. And congratulations on the close of Splunk. Uh, that was well ahead, I think, of where people thought it was going to be, so uh, myself included. Um, uh, but, that, but that was good to hear. And I, I think one of the things that I like about CVDs, in fact, being an analyst, before I was an analyst, I was an engineer, I relied on the Cisco CVDs because it, it uh, you know, from my perspective, it takes a lot of the heavy lifting out of deploying infrastructure. The, anybody can put the stuff together, but then it's the year-long process of tweaking and tuning infrastructure where that really burns up a lot of IT time, which I think the CBDs yeah, get rid of. Totally right. It's about taking the guesswork out of getting it to day zero. And then also, across the platforms, we build those best practices settings that go into that documentation, into the policies that we then instantiate in the software from a management perspective. So that way customers not only get started right, but they can kind of live through the next five, six years of operating that in infrastructure yeah. in a best practices type state. Yeah, and I wanted to go ask about Splunk since you brought that up. And so it, it did close uh, during GTC week, which I thought was interesting because it does add a lot to Cisco's AI story. So can you go into a little detail on, on how the uh, you think it'll help Cisco really push forward with AI? Yeah, absolutely, and it, it was coincidence. It wasn't planned. It wasn't planned on closing uh, this first day. Well, but if you didn't plan it, you couldn't have picked a better day. So. <laughs> but no, I think if you think about what Splunk is, Splunk is you know an observability and, and security tool that enables us to, to get access to data around other parts of a. It's not just network infrastructure, yeah. but it's access to, to logs and information around the entire infrastructure that, that that customer has. And so as they start to think about certain AI workloads or things to get them more efficient or parse through their information or, or give them insights to what's happening in their internal uh, enterprise infrastructure, having access to all that data and having it in a place that gives us the ability to, to, to leverage it is, is going to be critical for anything they want to do in the future. Great, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with that there. And uh, I know at this event, you also, Cisco made an announcement. Uh, can you talk about what that is? Uh, the announcements that we, we made, obviously reinforcing the Cisco validated yeah. designs that we have out, and also that we're going to be a provider of Blackwell systems moving forward. With yeah. NVIDIA. And so Blackwell's interesting because it's the first chip that's maybe more than a chip, right? It's a, it's a, it's a system, and while they showed a lot of interesting things on stage, I think what people don't understand sometimes is NVIDIA builds those as reference designs and then allows right. companies like you to be able to adopt them. And so I think, I'm, you know, what, what are your thoughts on Blackwell? Are you excited about that? I mean, oh, definitely excited yeah. about it. It's a tremendous leap forward yeah. in terms of the amount of just performance that we can get. And I think it's staggering when you look at what has happened over just the last five or six years, and it's gonna continue, which is great. And it's also just from a chip perspective, really fascinating to see how NVIDIA is working with the other people like Synopsys that actually fuel the chip design industry yeah. to improve their processes. So it's almost like they're helping themselves accelerate their own timeline, which was like a really cool message at the beginning. Well, we're but all in, one big happy family now, right? <laughs> exactly. And the way that we bring it together is, you know, we'll take those Blackwell systems and we'll build them into solutions across the network and all the things that we've been talking about. Because to your point, you know, there's a lot of people that can provide a Blackwell system, but what we want to try and do is make it real easy for customers to consume those in an enterprise data center. Okay. And uh, so last question for you guys. Now I know, the, the, again, the partnership uh, with NVIDIA and Cisco has been, uh, you know, 
an extended one, but I also know there's some joint development to come in, which I know you can't talk about in detail, but at a high level, what can customers expect from the Cisco NVIDIA partnership? Yeah, and, and, and it is an engineering level partnership. It's not just uh, reselling of, of yeah. NVIDIA-based AI technologies like GPUs, which, which are also doing, as Jeremy pointed out. But I think what you'll see is exactly what we described before, which is to make these things simpler and easier to deploy, we have to have a better understanding of what's happening beyond the network. And so you can think about these tools actually digging down into the, the NICs and down into the servers and, and building a real end-to-end -end solution of our components and the NVIDIA components and not just taking uh, AI compute and attaching it to an Ethernet-based fabric. So we want to make the simplest, most secure, and easiest to use Ethernet-based fabrics we, we possibly can. Because if one component in that entire stack doesn't work, you're really only as strong as that weakest link, right? Or, or if it's yeah. inefficient, or if there's yeah. congestion. If, if anything is going slow in that system, it slows the entire system yeah. down. So building lossless, reliable Ethernet-based fabrics is exactly what we're and about. I've talked to a lot of companies about the price they pay for data scientists, so yeah. having them being able to work is a good thing. So, uh, Anything else either you want to add? No, we're just excited to be here. Yeah. It's looking, it's shaping up like the pretty busy and pretty exciting show, and we're looking forward to this week. Yeah, well, they're gonna open the doors soon. It's already packed in here. The doors aren't even open, so uh, I guess we'll have twenty thousand people coming in here soon. So, uh, anyways, uh, thank is, you. Yeah, no, on behalf of Jeremy and Kevin, I'm Zia Caraval from CK Research, saying uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on my next episode of Zcast.